Hi, and welcome to Call Your Damn Jets. Um, I recently moved my network to Ubiquity Equipment. I used to be on Asus. I think Asus is just not at the level I want for my house. Um, I've tried their mesh solution. It w- it didn't work right, and the I reached a breaking point one day when I was rebooting the device and rebooting and rebooting because there were problems between the devices, and suddenly something that had been uh, on my mind before and was going fairly slow on my network, suddenly it went fast, and I could not pinpoint what the problem was. It was just I rebooted devices, and then it seems to have cleared a problem. Uh, I decided at that point, and I had other problems before, I had a lot of problems on my network with connectivity between wireless devices and stuff like that. I couldn't do SSH in a device that was... If both devices were on wireless, I couldn't SSH into uh, the device that I wanted to. So I decided that I was done with them, and I went to Ubiquity. But Ubiquity is nice, and I, I, I... I'm hopeful that things are gonna st- stabilize at some point, and I'm, you know, I'm already happier with Ubiquiti than I am with Asus. I'll give them that. But the startup has been very rough, and I, sometimes I wonder if I should have just bought Ubiquiti earlier, like maybe five years ago or six years ago when I came into this house. And I have to say no. Because of all the, the 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 problems that I've seen over time with you know the configuration of the hardware, and I'm going to mention a few things that I've noticed that are problematic for me. First of all, they have a, a kind of an app on the phone that you can use to start configuring your devices. The problem with this app is that it does not really understand which stage your device is at with the firmware, for instance. So one thing I was trying to do was to clone my MAC address, because I've always cloned my MAC address from router to router. Whenever I plug a new router onto my uh, Comcast modem, I ask it to clone the MAC address from the previous router, I and I right now I don't remember <laughs> from when, <laughs> where, when uh, that MAC address came into being, but uh, it's a practice that I've done for forever. And I've never had to reboot um, the modem because I plugged in a new router and it because I cloned the MAC address. So the app showed me options to clone the MAC address and I filled them out and it, it didn't work and it didn't work, and I tried this and that, and it didn't work. Eventually, I went online, and somebody said, have you rebooted your modem? I said, no, I'll try it. Um, And then when it was rebooting, um, well, after it was rebooting, because while it was rebooting, I I didn't have any connection. But after it, it rebooted, I said, well, first of all, I said, well, it works, and I was puzzled. And somebody said, well, it's uh, Mac locking. You know, it sees the Mac and then it locks to that Mac. So if you change the computer, which has a different Mac address, it it will ignore it. So I said, okay, that's all very nice and well. But I asked the app to clone the previous Mac address so it shouldn't be a problem. And, and then I investigated further and I, I was able to get on my... Uh, UDM Pro, and I saw the firmware, and the firmware was 1.8 point something, which was prior, like the version just prior to the version that they released that supported MAC address cloning. Uh, And I I upgraded the firmware, and then I did the cloning, and, and once I did the cloning, everything was fine, because I still had my old networking equipment and my new networking equipment side by side, and I could unplug from the modem and plug it into any which way between the two and once the cloning was in place there was no problem I didn't have to reboot the the modem every time it just it's fine you can lock as much as you want but you're gonna see the same MAC address so go ahead lock (laughs) Uh, so there was no problem but you see the app 
And, and, and this app is what ubiquity pushes on people. When you get your device, they say, oh, you go, you do this, you do that, you use the app to configure. The app misled me into thinking that my equipment was capable of cloning the Mac. Um, but I'm a new user. That's the app misled me. It's not my fault. I don't have, I, I shouldn't have to read a thick specifications book to tell me, first of all, that the Mac option is not present in my device and then discover that I need to do a firmware upgrade, which I did. And then I had the, the Mac option and so on and so forth. Uh, I, I'm puzzled by that. I think the company doesn't have a good self-awareness of the quality of their product. Right now, you know, I have the app on my phone, but I'm not using it. And I would, I might use it for informative purposes and I might compare with what I see on the computer. But for setup, for instance, I would say don't use the app because it can be disconnected from what you actually have in your hands. Um, and I did see a video where somebody was, was installing a new system and he went straight for the web interface and, and it should probably have been what I, uh, what I have done. I, I, I'm capable of just going to the web interface. I've done it before. I've done it a million times. But if the company comes over and says, use the app, what am I going to do? I decided to use the app and I was bitten. The next time I'm going to use the web interface. Um, and then there, 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 there have been more problems. Like um, today I discovered that if I have certain options that are turned on by default when you set up a wireless interface, this is turned on by default. If I have those things turned on by default, my wireless devices in my house, some of them are not going to want to talk to my wireless uh, access point. They're just going to say no connection. And I'm not going to get any error message. Um, you know, what, what's the problem? Why do you not want to connect? I, you know, f I don't know what, what goes on in, the, in that software that they don't want to connect. But there were two options like that that were turned on by default. They were they're turned on by default. That's a, To me, that's a company telling me you should have this on by default when you create a new network. But I've researched it and I found that you don't need those two options on by default. Actually, you should turn them off because they can create compatibility problems with your hardware. And and it's not like in rare cases. I have a, a pedestrian house and one of the things it was causing a problem with was my HVC thermostat. I, and that I don't really decide what it is I'm going to get for a thermostat. I did look at the Nest thermostat and other thermostat that, that are out there and stuff like that. And it, it's just a whole slew of problems trying to, to change the thermostat. So our thermostat is intelligent to up to a point. Um, you can have schedules and it knows, you know, if the temperature outside is low and, and then the temperature is inside is different and then how, when to start. It's going to start the, the HVAC ahead of time and stuff like that. So it is not stupid. And that's why it is connected uh, to the internet. I can I can control it remotely if I want to, um, but it didn't want to connect to my to my network. And this is not something that I control. I cannot just turn around and get another device that will connect to the network. I have to live with this device. So I had to adapt the controller to turn off uh, those two options, and. Um, to me, that's not looking good either. It's like you tell, you know, if you put it on by default, you're telling the user, yeah, this should be on. But um, no, it should be off uh, because you're going to have problems with your devices in your house. And I'm not sure that it, in, in the best of words, it makes that much of a difference if you turn them on in terms of performance. Oh, another thing I discovered is that if... There are places in the interface um, that require you to have internet access for it to work properly. So if you go into the, the, the GUI to configure the UDM Pro, 
you go to certain places like if you want to turn on the backups and then it asks for encryption and stuff like that and it's going to do a query to the network and uh, and if you don't have network at that time because you're just starting up with your system and you're just putting it together it's going to fail and as it can fail in mysterious ways there were two places where i had that problem one was oh one, one the other one was to to allow remote access and in both the case of remote access and uh, creating backups the, it needed a key that is held by or it needed me to authenticate against um the the website of the company and uh, I had no internet connection at that time. So the first one I tried was the um, remote access to turn it back on. I had turned it back. I had turned it off for a second for to do something. Then I turned it back on and then it wanted to have my password. But and then I entered it. But it, it gave a bizarre it gave an error that was cryptic. I couldn't tell what was the problem. Then when I got to the point where there's the backup configuration, I did something similar where I didn't turn it off because it was already off, but I turned it on and then started asking for my uh, username and password. And when I clicked on OK there, then I got a the better error message that said, you don't, you, that to me, I don't remember what the language was exactly, but I thought, oh yes, I don't have connectivity. And this thing is trying to authenticate me against the company's uh, information and that's why it's failing so for a while I had those things not set to the way I wanted because I couldn't connect to the internet and then eventually when I was able to connect to the internet I was able to set it up but you see again I see that and my problem is with uh, ubiquity it's not it's not okay to have software that when it, it cannot connect what you get is a cryptic error message the second error message was better but it wasn't great what i would want to see in both cases is you know this person doesn't have connectivity so if they want to do something with this or that it's not going to work you tell them ahead of time and there should be a, a warning even on the screen before you start messing with the option like you currently do not have internet connectivity. If you want to turn this on, you basically can't because I'm going to have to connect to the company's website and and for authentication. Uh, you should have internet connectivity if you want to change this. So it should be there ahead of time. But if for some reason it needs to be an error, then the error message should know like oh i don't have access you know even some things as simple as right now i do i cannot access the company's website already it would be something because then you if, if you know if you don't have connectivity always oh, because i don't have connectivity to the internet or if it's because of it, for instance if you're for whatever reason you're operating behind some corporate firewall or something and you're doing something and the firewall is blocking you from accessing that company for some reason i don't know what it would be but it, it can happen then you can mentally work it out like oh i you cannot access that website oh it's because of this reason and i need to fix this before you can access that website that would be useful so you know what i'm saying is that it doesn't have to be like detecting that oh you are offline but have an error message that is more uh, eloquent than the first error message I think was like error zero something it, it was very cryptic I couldn't make heads or tails of it and usually you know when I send an error message like this morning I was helping somebody online and you know the error message was come in not found it's like what does what does that tell you that come in not found it's you know you haven't installed what it is you're trying to run or you have a problem with your path. You already have something to work with. Now, this person were just asking, but I said, you know, this is what it means when you have come in not found. You read the error message and you can work with that. 
maybe you're gonna run into a dead end because the command is there and everything seems fine, but you have something to work with. The error message I got from the the, the software for configuring the Dream Machine uh, was useless. There was no direction to go in. There was nothing to check. There was it was just pointless until I got to the second one where there I think the message was still kind of like what do you mean? But I was intelligent enough to understand it and figure out that, oh, I'm not connected to, to the internet. And this was a hypothesis, actually. I was thinking, like, probably it's because I'm not connected to the internet and I cannot do it. And then later I was able to confirm it. So, yeah, overall, um, you know, I, I'm happy with my ubiquity purchase. I think the company is making uh, bizarre choices in terms of what they show to prospective client when they try to sell them. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be mostly smooth sailing from uh, now on, but uh, maybe I'm going to have another video about them. So for now, I just want to say goodbye.